Former WWE superstar Matt Riddle is reportedly unlikely to join All Elite Wrestling. We'll let you know why. Wheeler Utah provides an update on Brian Danielson's position last night on AEW Collision, whereas his opponent for AEW Dynamite Grand Slam, Nigel McGuinness, says he will try to end Danielson's career if indeed he does show up at Arthur Ashe Stadium. Jack Perry once again retains the TNT Championship on Collision. An FTW Championship match is confirmed for AEW Dynamite Grand Slam. Willow Nightingale loses the CML Al Women's World Championship at the 91st anniversary anniversary show. Armando Alejandro Estrada reportedly signs a WWE Legends contract. Stokely Hathaway could be set to be managing an AEW's tag team division moving forward. Speaking of which, the Outrunners and FTR unite after the main event of last night's collision. Mariah May says she wants Mina Shirakawa as part of her AEW Women's World Championship celebration. And Anna Jay returns to AEW TV with a vignette last night. Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of professional wrestling. Let's begin with the original bro is not going to be a bro in All Elite Wrestling. According to Sean Ross Sapp of Fight for Select, Matt Riddle is very unlikely for AEW. During a recent interview with SI Stephen Mohausen, Riddle noted that he's had a conversation with AEW founder Tony Khan, but that it was an awkward one. He said, quote, I talked to Tony, Riddle said, I don't know if he likes me. He seemed happy. I wrestled Zack Sabre Jr. in Chicago. He seemed cool about it. I don't know. When you meet me, I'm very sarcastic. But when I met him, I was like, oh, you like that match? But I said it in a different way. And it looked at me all confused. And I was like, never mind, dude. And I just walked away. So that was my experience with that. Now, Fight for Select have been told that behind the scenes, Tony Khan has not had any interest in bringing Matt Riddle into All Elite Wrestling, especially over the last number of years. He was also noted to fight for the AEW talent almost never works Matt Riddle on the indies, and when they do, it's in Mexico. Now, Riddle had confirmed he'd had talks with TNA Wrestling, and sources there told Fightful they're hopeful he can appear. He's wrestled in MLW and New Japan Pro Wrestling, but does not yet have a contract. Now, what's the latest when it comes to Brian Danielson? Well, Wheeler Utah's provided a bit of an update, with the official AEW account referring to Utah as being shell-shocked after being forced to witness the brutal betrayal of Brian Danielson at the hands of John Moxley. Utah returned on collision with an update of sorts while he was restrained in the ring of All Out and thereby powerless to help. He watched one mentor literally attempt to suffocate the other in abject horror. In a backstage interview with Lexi Nair upon his arrival to the arena for collision, Wheeler Utah was seemingly still in a disconnected state. While normally poised and well-spoken, Utah was instead distracted and depressed but vowed to try and give his all in the ring. Utah said he wouldn't reveal specifics out of respect for Danielson but that his mentor was doing the best he could. Yuta would go on to mention that his opponent for his match, Anthony Henry, was a strong competitor. While somewhat despondent during the match and being on the receiving end of a lot of offense, he fired up at the end and picked up the victory over Henry with a violent homage to Danielson. Now, as far as Danielson's more immediate future, it was confirmed this week on AEW Dynamite that if Brian Danielson is cleared, it will be Danielson versus Nigel McGuinness once again at AEW Dynamite Grand Slam with their rivalry from Ring of Honor over a decade ago being renewed. Now, as I mentioned, on Wednesday's AEW Dynamite, Nigel McGuinness convinced Tony Khan to allow him to face Brian Danielson at AEW Dynamite Grand Slam. Nigel's pitch came after John Moxley told Darby Allen that Danielson wouldn't be at AEW Dynamite Grand Slam and Darby and got Darby to agree to face him at the event. Of course, Darby Allen was originally scheduled to challenge Danielson for the AEW World Championship at the event. On AW Collision, Nigel explained that Moxley speculated on Danielson's condition, and when he learned Danielson was without an opponent, he made his appeal to Tony. Ring of Honor footage of Danielson versus McGuinness matches aired with Nigel saying that they were bitter rivals 16 years ago. Nigel said that no one has beaten Brian like he has, quote, no matter how much success he's had in his career, he is still haunted by the memories of facing me in the ring. Nigel said he's in the best shape of his life, and if Danielson shows up to Arthur Ashe Stadium, he will try to end his career. Quote, the ball is in your court, Brian. Now, if Danielson is clear to compete at AEW Dynamite Grand Slam, the AEW World title will not be on the line. Of course, as I mentioned previously, fans have still not heard from Danielson since he was suffocated with a plastic bag by John Moxley at AEW All Out.
Now, Jack Perry, he is still the AEW TNT champion after defeating an interim EVP. Jack Perry made the latest defense of his TNT championship during AEW Collision this week as part of the wider issues between the Elite and interim EVP Christopher Daniels. The Fallen Angel challenged Perry to defend his title against him this weekend. This was Daniels' first championship match in AEW since May of 2021 when he challenged the Young Bucks for the tag team titles alongside Frankie Kazarian. It was also his first match since wrestling the Bucks alongside Matt Seidel in May early this year. But like the aforementioned bouts, Daniels proved unsuccessful, losing via pinfall after about five minutes of action. This was the fourth successful title defense of Perry's first reign. He won the TNT Championship at Forbidden Door in June, and the second since unsuccessfully challenging Brian Danielson for the AEW World Championship at All Out last weekend. Following the bout, Perry made a quick exit from the venue before getting into his signature scapegoat van and driving away. Now, we spoke before about Arthur Ashe Stadium and AEW Dynamite Grand Slam. Another title defense has been announced for the show. Three weeks ago, Hook defeated longtime enemy Chris Jericho to become a record setting three time. FTW champion. With his victory a month in the rear view, Hook has now had his sights focused on AW Dynamite Grand Slam, where he will defend his title against Roderick Strong. During the opening match of Saturday's episode of AEW Collision, Hook's title defense against Strong was announced via a graphic. The announcement comes after the September 11th episode of AEW Dynamite, where Hook took to a video package to officially challenge Strong to a title match. As the match is for the FTW Championship, fans can expect to see an FTW Rules match at Arthur Ashe Stadium come September 25th. Any additional details have not yet been disclosed. Of course... Grand Slam will be held in New York in two weeks' time and will consist of both a live broadcast of AEW Dynamite and a taping of that week's episode of AEW Collision. Hook vs. Strong is actually the only singles championship match currently on the card as Brian Danielson had been set to defend the AEW World Championship against Darby Allen, but recent events on Dynamite have resulted in Darby putting that title shot on the line against John Moxley. Danielson, he's going to be involved in a match against Nigel McGuinness. The Young Bucks have a World Tag Team Championship defense scheduled against Will Ospreay and Kyle Fletcher. But as of right now, this is the only singles title match set for the show. Now, Willow Nightingale is no longer the CMLL Women's World Champion. On Friday's CMLL 91st anniversary show, Willow Nightingale lost the CMLL World Women's Championship to Zeksus. The match concluded with both women on the top rope, and Nightingale was sent crashing with an avalanche power slam, eliminating her chances of retaining the title. This was Nightingale's first and only championship defense since winning it in a triple threat contest back on July 13th. Now, this is quite an interesting story when it comes to more WWE legends signing legends contracts. Former WWE manager Armando Alejandro Estrada has signed a legends contract with the company, according to PW Insider. Now, a legends deal offers former stars the opportunity to receive continued income from merchandise sales and other revenue, such as television and video game appearances. Now, Estrada's career began at uh, WWE's former developmental territory, OVW, in 2004, where he participated in tag team matches and worked as a bodyguard slash manager to other stars. He rose to fame while managing the late Umaga from 2006 to 2007. During that time, he helped Umaga capture the Intercontinental Championship. After being written off of the main roster, he then debuted as the general manager of WWE's rebooted ECW. He would remain there until he was released from his first contract with WWE back in 2008. Now, many people often forget this, but in 2010, Estrada was re-signed and placed in a storyline with Tyson Kidd, who was looking for the right manager. Their interaction would be brief. He would then be let go again from WWE back in 2012, so he was under contract for like two years. His last in-ring match was in 2013, where he would return to manage Umaga's nephew, the Samoan werewolf of the newly established bloodline Jacob Fatu, in uh, March 2019. Estrada now joins other recent legends, such as Jacqueline and Victoria, who have signed such a deal with WWE. Now, speaking of managers, Stokely Hathaway could be set to manage in the AEW tag team division. In a clip that aired on AEW Collision that was also shared on social media, Stokely Hathaway seemed to be up to something. While he entered a room and went to a stack of DVDs labeled with different tag team matches, he would pick up Swerve and Our Glory versus The Acclaimed and The Briscoes versus FTR3 before ultimately placing one that marked The Young Bucks versus Darby and Sting into a DVD player. 
the video ends with it seeming as though Hathaway is sitting down to review the match from AEW Revolution for scouting purposes. Now, Hathaway has most recently been in the corner of Chris Statlander, but this video suggests he'll be adding a men's tag team to his list of clients as well. At this point, it isn't clear whether this would be a brand new tag team he's forming or if he's going to take on the role of managing a team that already exists. I guess we'll find out more in the near future. Now, speaking of tag teams, two of the most popular tag teams in AEW right now, United, last night, that being the Outrunners and FTR. FTR were victorious over the Grizzled Young Veterans in the main event of AEW Collision on September 14th. After the match, the Grizzled Young Veterans attacked FTR until the Outrunners made the save. After an initial rejection by FTR, the two teams performed the epic Predator handshake to close the show. Of course, the Outrunners have been growing in popularity and as of right now, are one of AEW's biggest merchandise sellers. Now, Mariah May has said she wants Mina Shirakawa. Mariah May won't have her AEW Women's World Championship title celebration until Mina Shirakawa is present. On the September 14th episode of AEW Collision, AEW Women's Champion Mariah May informed fans that her title celebration would not be taking place in Dayton, Ohio. On Wednesday's Dynamite, Mariah asked for Mina Shirakawa to return. On Collision, she said that she had the best times in stardom and AEW with Mina and she would not have her celebration without her. I want Mina. Mariah was interrupted by Yuka Sakazaki, who was told to get in line. May won the AEW Women's title from Timeless Tony Storm at AEW All In. She has postponed her AEW Women's title celebration now on multiple occasions. And speaking of the AEW Women's division, Anna Jay is back in AEW and she has her sights set on some pretty big names. A vignette aired for Anna Jay on the September 14th episode of AEW Collision, where she discussed her time in Japan and how she has evolved. Anna said she now has her sights set on AEW Women's World Champion Mariah May and AEW TBS Champion Mercedes Monet. Jay competed at the Stardom 5 Star Grand Prix 2024. She finished with a 3-3 three three record. She has not wrestled on AEW television since the June 26th episode of AEW Dynamite. But there you go, guys. The latest pro wrestling news for you. Be sure to smash a like or the like button. Be sure to subscribe, bottom right-hand corner. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.